Look at these angry mushrooms. Oh! I'm almost done. Just hold on, please. Oh, pretty good flag jump. Hey, this is the intro to the longest video on the internet about how to resin your puzzle. So, this is a puzzle that we did and we love when the new uh, Nintendo uh, whatever came out. It's on wood and then we coated it in art resin. So, watch this video to see how to do this with your puzzle. If you like puzzles and you want to save them, join us on this adventure and we're happy to have you come along. Good? Okay. Back to work. Here we go! Mario time! Alright, so we finally finished our puzzle. It looks great. Now what I'm gonna do is just take the measurements and then head out to the garage to cut the wood for underneath our puzzle. So this one looks like it's 18 inches on the dot by 24 inches on the dot. Write that down, or you can just check the box. But I wanted to make sure it wasn't like an eighth of an inch off or something, Jeff. Let's go. Okay, so I'm just using this, it's just a scrap piece of wood that we have in the garage, but it's, it's perfect for this because it's just three quarter inch MDF. So it's thick enough that it's not gonna warp over time. That's the main thing. I mean, when we're building canvases, they tend to like to use birch because you can get it really thin and it holds up without warping. So my first cut, I'm just using this table saw. I'm just gonna set it to 24 inches, lock it in there, safety glasses, and I have to plug it in. Okay, it's gonna be noisy. Perfect. And then 18 inches. All right, there's our board. So let's head inside and we're gonna uh, glue the puzzle to the board as the first step and then prepare it for the resining. Come on in, Jeff. When we did this in the past, we kind of learned some things about resining puzzles. And that is that puzzles are all different qualities. This puzzle, puzzle is fairly cheap. And what can happen with that is, I'll show you an example. Now Jeff, if you can get nice and close here. As you can see, the resin actually kind of soaked into the edges of each crack and it left a darker black line just because you know when you get cardboard wet, it looks darker. So puzzles that are really absorbent, you're gonna to wanna to pre-seal them and that's what we're gonna do with this one. And to do that, all that we're gonna use is craft glue. This is just Elmer's white school glue. You can pick it up absolutely, absolutely anywhere. Nothing fancy here. Just putting a lot of glue on here. You know what? This is ridiculous. Look at that. We got our white glue on here, and we're just gonna do that. You don't have to be super exact with this because the resin itself is really gonna hold the puzzle down too, so. Good enough. It's good to build your puzzle actually on something. We built it on this piece of plexiglass just so you can move it around and you can make this next step a heck of a lot easier. Okay, so now watch this. I think you'll need two people to help you. You think so? Yes. I'm gonna do this by myself just to show Patty that, you know, if you're at home alone, you know, you have a bunch of cats, you're just sad, you can just do it on your own. Look at this. And just slide this one out, smooth, cool like a cucumber. And bam, this craft glue, you can just kind of push it around the surface. <laughs> Someone help me. <laughs> Guys, don't laugh. <laughs> All right, and we're back. So I actually had to get some help because uh, if you're gonna slide it on the top, like just be very, very gentle, but you do have a bit of, of room to play when you put it on there. So I'm just gonna push it all down nice and hard. So now the next step, and we're doing this step to avoid what we talked about earlier about the puzzle lines darkening, is we're gonna just put a coat of Elmer's glue on the top to just seal it. And again, this is just so that the lines don't darken. So we like just using craft glue because it's easy to find, even at the dollar store. It always dries clear and it's cheap. So for today, this is all that we're gonna do because we're gonna let this dry overnight 
and then we'll come back tomorrow and we're totally ready for the final resin coat. Done. And we'll see you tomorrow. <clears throat> Here we go. All right, it's the next day and this looks perfect. I'm still doing a bit of prep till I get the resin uh, poured. And actually the pouring the resin is actually very, very fast. It's all the prep work and making sure that it works well. That really takes the time. So there's a tiny bit of an overhang on this side. So I'm just gonna turn it over and trim that with a knife. Need a nice sharp knife. And I'm also gonna find a piece of wood so I don't cut into this tablecloth. And it's a nice thick clear shower curtain because then when you pour the resin, it just picks right up. You just wanna protect your surface because the art resin is a glue basically, right? So just take this board and just nice slow patient cuts. Sharp new blade, it makes everything easier. Beautiful. The next step is we're gonna put tape on the bottom of this actual piece of wood because when the resin drips over the side, it's gonna create little drips all the way along because we'll have it raised up. But if we have tape, just painter's tape, it'll just peel right off the next day and you'll have a nice clean, tidy edge. If you don't put the tape, that's okay. You can file them off. Sometimes you can even stick a chisel underneath the drops and just kind of pick the, the drips off. Just do it right, do it once, and use painter tape on the edge. You'll be happy you did. So it has a cure time of 24 hours, meaning that after 24 hours, it'll feel hard to the touch. But if you pushed with a fingernail, you could actually put a little dent into the surface. It'll self heal, so it won't stay there. But the actual full cure time is three days till it's really hard. I like to say until you want to start tap dancing on it, right? Which I recommend. Do you go to the ballet? Nope. Do you ever dress up in tights? No comment. Again, how long did that take? Two minutes, one minute? But it's worth it. Just do the prep work and you'll save yourself more time later. That's the truth for anything in life, isn't it, Jeff? I actually wrote a book about it. Did you, what's it called? It's called Do the Work Prep Work and it'll make everything easier. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to raise this up just a bit off the surface again so that this doesn't get stuck to your actual table you're working on. And then I wanna make sure it's perfectly level. These are painter's triangles that you can get at a hardware store in the painting section usually. Now, they're great, but they are ridiculously expensive. So, even though I have those, just look around your house and steal things from your baby. These work fine. All you're doing is lifting it up. You don't have to go and buy these, but you can if you want to. And then the last thing that we want is these are called wood shims. So it's basically a piece of wood that's a really long, thin triangle. So if I need to raise up a corner, I have my stand and then I have a wood shim underneath it. If I need to raise up this corner, you just slide the wood shim in further, right? Fantastic little trick. So everyone's got a smartphone and there are tons of level apps. This is a good level because it has both directions at once. Yeah, this one's just called dual, D-U-A-L, level. What this level is telling me is I could raise um, the side furthest away from me up a bit and this corner has to go up the highest. So I'm gonna raise this corner the highest and then I'm going to also raise this corner quite high to bring up that whole side. Look at that. Next step, once you're done re putting resin on, you have to let it sit overnight. So I always start by knowing what I'm gonna cover it with when it's actually done. And there's hair, dust, bugs, all those things can go and land in your art resin and ruin it basically, right? Because we resin a lot of stuff, we just have this room here full of different shapes and sizes of boxes, right? You know, like lids to like uh, paper boxes and stuff. Just save all that kind of stuff because it becomes very useful. Great, so we're level, it's raised, we taped off the bottom. Next, I'm gonna put gloves on because I'm gonna start using resin. These ones are called nitrile gloves and they also have some uh, chemical resistant properties. You can wash art resin off of your hands, but it's like a glue, so this is mostly so that you don't get all sticky and dirty, right? There's no VOCs in it, so I don't have to wear a mask and it's very low odor, which is fantastic. So I'm gonna need a mixing cup, my resin, and a stir stick. Uh, are you ever so organized that you lose things? This is a resin spreader and it's great because see these notches? You yeah. See that? So imagine if, let's go down to the painting. You'll see how this goes. You're dragging the thick resin across the surface 
but these notches allow for some of the resin to stay, right? So that's the spreader, and then I pulled out one of these stir sticks, and these are great too, because you can also peel the resin right off of them and reuse them. So we buy our mixing cups at the dollar store. Let me show you something. So this is a juice jug. What's cool about this is I finished resining something, then just put it upside down on your, even on a scrap piece of paper or a piece of cardboard. But watch this, hopefully it'll peel out. Look at that, the whole thing just peeled right out. And it's a brand new mixing container. Of course, you have to do some measuring, so having something with lines on it sure does help. The good thing about art resin is it's an equal one to one mixing ratio. So you can just visualize how much you need. That being said, how much resin do we need to cover this? That's a great question, David. I'm gonna do some math. So on artresin.com at the very bottom, there's what's called the resin usage calculator. And you just type in your dimensions and then you will see how much resin you'll need and what size bottle you would be best for you to purchase so you're not wasting too much. Of course, like anything, the more you buy, the better the value. And once you do this, you're gonna want a lot of resin because you're gonna love it. And this is the strongest glue in the universe. Resin hardener. Mix the two together, you have 45 minutes to work with it. Oh yeah! Resin hardener. Mix the two together, you have 45 minutes to work with it. Art resin comes with these lids in the top and that's just so that it doesn't spill during shipping. The easiest way to get these out, cut a hole in it, Stick your finger in it. Pull it up. Let's go. Look how clear it is. The key to stirring art resin is one, do it long enough, and two, you want to scrape the bottoms and you want to scrape the sides because each part on its own is super sticky. And if you don't scrape the sides and the bottom, then unmixed material stays on the side and the bottom. And then when you're pouring the resin onto your actual puzzle or art or whatever you're making, and what that leaves is that leaves some sticky spots, right? Because it was on the side and it wasn't mixed. In general, we say stir for three minutes. It's just a good rule of thumb. All I do is I stir until I say to myself, that seems like about three minutes. And then I count to 30 seconds. It's foolproof. So let's talk about other resin things. Resin is very temperature sensitive. So when we talk about how long the pot life is and everything, we're talking about room temperature. If you want it to cure faster, you heat up your room. The hotter the room, the thinner the resin is. So it will self level more and the bubbles will come out easier. And opposite, the colder your room is, the thicker the resin, so it won't go out as far. But the bubbles have a harder time, excuse me, the bubbles have a harder time the bubbles have a... <laughs> the bubbles will have a harder time coming out when it's cold. Okay, I'm finished with the stir stick. I'm just going like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Set it down. Any extra resin that's dry on there, I can keep reusing that and reusing that. How I like to do it usually is I pour a bunch in the middle and then I kind of circle around to just put it everywhere, you know? The more you can kind of pour it out, the less spreading you're gonna have to do. You can kind of see here how the resin is moving on its own. You want it to be super thick like that. So if it could self-level all by itself, now what you're gonna do is just gonna take your spreader and you're just basically pushing it around. That's what you're doing. So we're not brushing, we're pushing. And just drag it all over the surface. Beautiful. And again, I'm not wearing a respirator because there's no VOCs, so you don't have to. A VOC is a volatile, organic compound and basically what that means in resin is if you were to use some filler or some cheap additives to make it look like there's more resin those cheap things when the chemical reaction happen they evaporate they basically are meant to just leave so there's shrinkage and there is stuff in the air that you don't want to be breathing in you could make epoxy resin for very cheap and make a lot of money but you know you're sacrificing certain things in the quality including yellowing and, and health. So, you won't find a clearer resin, I'll tell you that. It's all you can do. Just try your best and don't give up. Cause that's all you can do. Okay, and we're almost done here, believe it or not. And the next step is everyone's favorite step. Using a torch or a heat gun to get rid of all the bubbles. 
This is a butane torch, it's kind of a good intro torch. It's refillable with butane. So butane is lighter fluid, the same thing that's in your lighters. Now this is my all time favorite. It's what I started with and it's what I always use. It's propane. Propane is way easier to find. It's cheaper. It's always the best tool for the job. So this torch is fantastic. You don't have to use a flint or anything. You just turn on the gas. You'll hear it, see that? And then you push the button. You know, just a, just a flame like that. That's perfect. A couple things, when you're torching, think of it like ironing. With ironing, you don't hold the iron in one place, right? Don't hold the torch in one place or you'll, you'll find it burns a bit and it'll leave a little tiny little dip. Do you think you could focus on some bubbles? Okay, like right here. Again, just moving it quickly, back and forth. You know, I'm about an inch off the surface, maybe two inches off the surface. And then I'm just gonna just systematically go back and forth. This part's just so cool. Did you just see it become perfect, right? Right in front of your eyes. So torch off. The last step is we always keep a box or little containers of toothpicks around. And then we also have lights going. You look into the reflection of the light and then you can see if there's any tiny pieces of dust or hairs. And usually there are a couple. It looks good. Something here. And sometimes just a little single bubble you wanna Pokes up. I'm putting on one more gloved hand and I'm gonna just rub the sides again. Just to help there not being in any drip lines, right? Beautiful. Okay, take this box. Look at that, beautiful. All right, so that's done. We'll let it sit overnight. Again, tomorrow it'll be harder to touch and we'll be able to see how, uh, how it looks. Okay, lights off. See you tomorrow. Check, 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 check. We're back. So it's day three. Overall, the resin pour is fantastic. Exactly what we want. I don't see any hairs, but you know what? We had two mistakes actually. And at first I was like, oh crap, the video is ruined. But now me and Jeff talked and we're just gonna tell you what we did wrong so that you don't make that same mistake. And also if you do make the same mistake, we're gonna show you how to fix it. So number one, this edge along here, we didn't put enough glue to pre-seal it. Look at it, it's soaked through the actual cardboard and left some marks. So that's disappointing. And the other thing we did, remember when we cut with the X-Acto knife? We didn't seal that edge, so it was exposed to the resin. You can see it's soaked in through the sides of the exposed cardboard because we cut it and resined it and didn't think about that, so don't do that. Okay, but don't worry, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna head to the garage and we're going to sand it with a power sander. I'm just using 80 grit sandpaper. You can really use any type. You just want to make it so it has some tooth. So when we pour the next coat on top, it's going to uh, really grip. The two layers will really stick together. But luckily, the only part that it really soaked in is over yellow. So I'm gonna sand it. Then we're gonna cheat and we're gonna paint yellow acrylic paint over top and then let that dry and then resin it. And you know, while we're at it, I'm actually just gonna paint all the sides yellow. Cause I just think that will look nice. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's do it. So I sanded the entire thing, but not only the spots, that we're painting over just because I'm gonna pour an entire new coat so I want the resin to stick everywhere. So it gets all white and scratchy. Don't worry about that. As soon as we pour the next coat on, that'll all disappear. So I just mixed up some yellow. I'm just gonna do this. Not the ideal way to do this, but at least we'll be able to show people watching what not to do and how to deal with problems exactly. You can use a brush. I always paint with like my hands and paper towel. And I sell my paintings for millions of dollars if you want to buy a painting. Um, they're for sale. You must have okay. a lot left. So don't worry, I'm going to come over it and tidy it up. I'm just kind of covering everything that I think I should. All right. So I'm just gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and do a second coat of paint along the edges just because it was so dark. So uh, I want it to be a nice vibrant yellow. But overall, I feel just fine about it. 
as Jackson Pollock said, there is no accident. Or maybe he said there is no such thing as an accident. Or maybe that was Jesus. Anyways, we'll see you soon. <sighs> I need to relax. Okay. All right, so I just poured my hopefully final coat over this. I'm just doing the final thing, spreading it. So I have about three square feet, so it's four ounces per square foot. So I mix just a bit over 12 ounces, just to be sure. Now, everyone in the office is making fun of me and saying like, Dave, you ruined it, Dave. This looks like garbage, start over, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and I'm like, no, this was a happy accident. It's gonna look fine, like just relax. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna cut with a table saw. I'm gonna take, a, take the table saw and cut about one inch off of the whole thing just to get rid of this a bunch of the painting area and then the edges it'll cut through the through the epoxy through the puzzle through the wood and it'll be that perfectly clean edge so i think that with this final perfect coat and the cuts you're gonna see it's gonna look great it was discouraging it was hard it was disappointing but you can figure it out and you're gonna say you know what dave's pretty darn clever and he kept his cool oh no i gotta torch it okay so i'm just gonna do the final torching like we said then cover it, get out of here, we'll be, we'll be back. It should be perfect at this point. Um, then we'll just cut it, hang it, and admire it. And yeah, so hopefully you've learned like what to do, what not to do, how to fix your errors, how to go with the flow, how to take a mistake and turn it into an opportunity. There is no accident. Sure, just gonna see if Rebecca's after me. Yeah, just with that gas flow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mother. Good. Okay, so I'm just, again, like I said, just cover it. Get out of here. And I think we should be done. Beauty. Okay, good. So that's the final coat, and I'm super happy with that last coat. It looks fantastic. It's hard to the touch. In three days is when it's going to be much harder, especially if in your, a warm room. It cures faster in a warm room. So now I'm just gonna cut the edges and you're gonna see it's just gonna make a perfect edge. I'm gonna leave it with unfinished wood instead of painting the sides and then just add the hanger on the back and we made it. Get noisy. Oh, I gotta plug it in. Great. That looks awesome. Okay, so we'll just figure out a way to hang it and call it a day. So do you like this new tool, Patty? I need to see it in action first. Yeah, so what we're doing here is you know how when you would get a plaque when you were young of like uh, the Blue Jays when they won the World Series or I had one of a tiger running on a beach. So if you look on the back, there's two circles and then there's a thin line in between and you slide the screw in. That's what we're gonna try and do on the back here, right? We are going to attempt it and hope for the best. Yeah, I've never done this before, but I went to the store and I got this thing, it's called a keyhole bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill two holes and then in one of the holes, we're just gonna slide this along so it kind of cuts under the groove. Did so you set the depth? Well, that's what we're gonna do now. All right, I think okay. we're ready to do this. Who's excited? I am. Oh. <laughs> so that's about center and about like that. So I'm gonna do a circle there and a circle there and connect the lines. What do you think? Okay, here we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. It's just purring like a kitten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> All right. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Watch this, screw head in and slide over. Yeah. Do you understand that at home? You at home? So it makes a slot. It makes a slot oh, underneath the wood. I see. And there you have it, folks. Now all we have to do is hang it up and enjoy it. Yes. Right? Okay, so from doing this, it worked great, but next time I'll get a piece of wood and put it right on this plate and clamp it on there as a guide. So if I want a nice straight line with this keyhole bit, then I'll just slide along the guide. But that's how you learn, right? So stay fit and have fun. <laughs> <laughs>
That was a long journey, but in the end, we have this beautiful piece, and it can go on a wall, and we'll remember forever uh, uh, this. <laughs> Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, we love you. I hope you love this. And I hope you uh, have a good day today. Thanks for watching. <clears throat> Back to uh, Mario. Three lives isn't enough. Whoa.